Welcome to today's video. In the previous video we showed you how to go and actually set up uh, the SD card with the Raspbian and Wheezy distribution onto it. And today we're actually going to take and put it in the Raspberry Pi and we're actually going to go and uh, get it booted up and do initial configuration. But you need a few things in order to get started and here they are. First you need the Raspberry Pi itself. Next, you just need some kind of a case to hold it so we don't accidentally short out any pins or any uh, connections. You're also going to need some kind of video cable. In this case, I'm using HDMI, um, but you also have composite video out if you want to use that. That's, that'll work. Uh, then you also need a keyboard. Here, I'm using a wireless keyboard, so I need the dongle. And uh, we don't need it for this video, but if you're going to use Wi-Fi, <coughs> I'd suggest that you go ahead and uh, uh, get that. We can go and plug it in. We won't be able to config. We won't configure it in this video, but we'll do it next. And then, um, lastly, is you need the SD card that we did in the last video with uh, the Raspberry and Wheezy distribution on it. So let's get started. All right. We're, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get started with the case, and this is a Bud Industries case, and uh, we're going to just uh, pull this apart. It just comes right apart here, but be careful with it. A little bit. There we go. Almost there. there. Okay, now with this you can snap the Raspberry Pi into either half, it doesn't matter, so because they're both built the same. Um, but we're going to just uh, carefully snap our Pi in here. Oops. And uh, the orientation of this does not matter either. They've made it pretty much foolproof. So we're going to snap the, the Pi in here. And now there are uh, little tongs in here that might be kind of hard to see, but they keep the, the Raspberry Pi from sliding back and forth. This is one of the complaints about the Raspberry Pi is that uh, it does make it difficult to mount it because uh, they don't have uh, through holes like the Arduino board actually does have uh, mounting holes, which makes the Arduino a little bit easier to mount in, into something. So as you can see here, they, they have... Uh, some mounting, four mounting holes on there. So, all right, enough, of the, enough off of the, the path. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get our um, micro SD card that we had, had done in the previous video. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna slide it into the SD slot here on the end. And uh, if you've got it mounted that way, the, uh, the contacts are up. And with this case, it's a little bit difficult to get it in there, but it will go. So, okay, there we go. We got that slid in there. The, the next thing that we're going to need to do is uh, if you've got um, a wireless keyboard and um, the Wi-Fi module, I'm going to do, put those in next. So the Wi-Fi module I'm going to stick in here and into the USB, and then my USB dongle for my wireless keyboard I'm going to snap in here. All right, so those are in. And the last little bit that we've got to do here is to actually take the uh, the uh, video cable and plug it in. So since I'm using HDMI, I'm going to take and just uh, plug it right here in the HDMI uh, socket. Uh, if you're using composite video, you can put it on there and hook it up to a TV set or something. Um, but uh, I'm going to go and plug the other end here in my monitor so I can see what's going on. All right, I forgot to mention in order to get the Raspberry Pi to do anything, you actually need to apply some power to it. So uh, one of the, what you'll need to do is get yourself a USB power supply. Now, depending on the, the peripherals that you have onto it, uh, the, the Raspberry Pi will, may require more power than the adapters able to provide. So if you find that you're having problems getting the Raspberry Pi to boot up or it's not stable, you may need to get yourself a, a beefier power supply that can put out a little bit more current. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually uh, apply uh, the power to the, to the micro USB connector here uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Oops, we had it upside down. There we go. And you can see the LEDs light. And now on our display, we're starting to see it boot up. OK, now the Raspberry Pi is launching or booting here. Um, one of the things is the Raspberry Pi is configured for uh, people living in the UK. So if you live in the UK, you really don't need to go in here and change anything, probably. But um, this does come up by default on the first boot, so you'll, you'll want to go through the utility. You have to handle it one way or another. Um, 
I found out the hard way that the one of the important things is the keyboard layout is much different. Um, I went to issue some commands in Unix using the pipe symbol and the tilde was typed. Um, so if you don't live in the UK I highly suggest that you go through these. So we got a few options here and the first thing we're going to do is um, we have a 16 gig card so we're going to expand the root file system. Um, so if uh, that's the case for you go ahead and do that. All right, it's telling us that it will do it on the next boot. I'll say OK, just hit Enter. All right, next thing we want to do is configure the keyboard. So we're going to go down here to configure keyboard and hit Enter. It takes a minute. One other thing about these uh, selections, you can hit enter or just tab to the bottom. So uh, right now we're going to select the uh, the generic keyboard here. And now we're going to go in and you see all the options here for UK. So we'll select other. And we'll just go down and select the next one, English US. And then the next thing that uh, we're asked is what the keyboard layout is. We'll just take the default English. And then these are some different options that we can do, and I'm just going to select the defaults on all of these. And for this, we'll also say no. You may want to select yes. But okay, so it's saving our options. Da, 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 da. All right, so uh, the next thing we want to do is let's go down here and change the locale because, again, this is set up for the UK. We want it uh, set for the US, in my case. So hit Enter there. And we're going to scroll down to EN for English. Um, we'll find that the UK option is selected, so we'll unselect that one. There it is. Okay, just hit the space bar and it will unselect it and then scroll down and find en uh, u underscore us okay there we go and hit the space bar and to select it and then hit the tab to get to the ok and hit enter okay now it asks us for the default we're going to say english uh, us utf8 and tab hit ok and, and I mean hit enter on OK. So it's going to save our selections here and it'll take it a little bit. OK. So the next thing we want to do is change our time zone because it's set for UTC. Okay, so we just uh, move up to U.S. and we live on the East Coast here, so I'm going to select the Eastern. Obviously, change yours to wherever you're you're at. Okay, and then the next thing that we want to do is um, we've got uh, startup beha or start behavior. We'll go into that, and you got an option to go right to the desktop, and we're going to do that for the heck of it, because I always find myself typing start X anyways. And now we'll hit uh, tab to go down to, to finish and hit enter. And it's asking us to reboot. Yes, or none of our changes are going to take effect, so go ahead and do that. So now we'll reboot. Okay, it's coming back up. Okay, it's setting up our uh, keyboard mapping right now. Okay, it's done with that.
Okay, now it's re uh, resizing the uh, root file system, so this is going to take a little bit of time. Actually, n not just a little bit, it's going to take a lot. Uh, for the 16 gig card, I think it was between 10 and 15 minutes, maybe even longer, it seemed longer anyways. So um, just uh, be prepared for that. Okay, it's still, still doing the expanding the root file system. Uh, we're just about done. And there, just finished. Okay, it looks like it's going into our desktop now. So this is the first time we'll get to the desktop. And we see the Raspberry Pi logo. And voila, we're here. Now we need to test out a few things just to make sure our keyboard mapping is correct and our localization is okay. So why don't we just go ahead and start a terminal session here. Let's go ahead and just uh, type on the keyboard just to make sure that our characters are uh, mapped correctly. So we went. In the, we started with doing nano, so we're just typing some characters. We see that uh, our pipe and tilde symbols look good, so we know the keyboard's mapped correctly. And we're just typing out some more test map. Saying everything looks good. And okay. Let's exit. Why? What's this? This looks like it's in Spanish. Oh, I know what happened. I um. I I couldn't see it very well, and I think I jumped it into Spanish. So well, this is a good point to show that you can launch the configuration utility at any point. So let's go ahead and launch it by typing in Raspy. Uh, hyphen config. Okay, so let's select uh, the configure keyboard. Okay, so as you can see, this is all in Spanish, which makes it fun. This is okay, we know what we need. So we'll go f we're looking for, uh, let's see, where is it? Okay, there's our English US, so we selected that. So let's see if we did the ES, I'm sure we did. Oh, there it is. Let's go back on select that. Okay, tab to ex to accept. Okay, and then let's select English US and, and enter. Let's do the configuration. Okay, so we can just uh, tab down and say finish and enter. Now remember, we're going to have to reboot the machine to make these uh, changes go into effect. So oh, I was going to do uh, sudo shut down. Oh, but wait a second. We are in the um, graphical user interface. We don't need to do that. Um, let's uh, just go down here like we would in Windows. And... Uh, Click this power button here. And we get some options. And we could just say reboot right here. Okay, it should be rebooting here. Uh, here it goes. 
Okay, it's going to reboot. Let me just jump right to when it goes to the desktop. Okay, the desktop is uh, coming up. So let's check again to make sure that our keyboard is uh, correct and so on. So this time we're going to take a different approach to launch Nano. Let's just go to start, you know, to our programs. Other and uh, find Nano. There's we go. Launch that. And uh, we'll just type some characters here. It looks good. Our menu is in English down at the bottom. But let's just go ahead and type. But it looks like we're good to go now, guys. So. If you've gotten this far, congratulations. You got the uh, Raspberry Pi to boot up to the desktop. All right, next I'm going to go into configuring the Wi-Fi. However, I'm only going to go over the devices that are already included in the, the Raspberry Weezy distribution. And specifically, I'm going to go over the Asus USB N10 um, wireless adapter. Uh, if you have another one that is not supported, then what I'm going to do is recommend that you go and pick up this book. Uh, that I already plugged before. I ought to be asking them for a royalty on this, right? Or or something. But um, this is really a good book, and I suggest that you pick it up. And there's actually a good section on here about configuring the Wi-Fi. I haven't followed it yet because uh, I actually, before I bought the book, I went out and bought the, the, the Asus adapter, and it worked perfectly out of the box. It was very nice and easy. Now, I did originally buy um, a TrendNet uh, adapter, which is the uh, TEW424UB. Uh, and this device did not work right out of the uh, box. I had uh, a lot of issues trying to figure out how to do it. I was looking on the internet for uh, assistance for it and really wasn't finding any good help. So I just said, well, the Micro Center, which is right near where I live, has uh, the, the Asus adapter. So I went and picked it up and uh, plugged it in. It was very pleased with it. And it's actually smaller than the trend, trend net. So very happy with that. But um, stay tuned.